All righty. Copper is an essential mineral, and what that basically means is your body can't produce it. You have to get copper from the diet. Now, we're looking at some of the functions of copper in the body. If we break these down, kind of very simplistically put here, copper aids iron absorption. Copper is an antioxidant. It plays a role in a system called SOD, superoxide dismutase. Copper plays a role biochemically in how your blood clots. So um, very, very important in that component. Blood pressure as well. Low copper uh, has been linked to blood pressure problems. And then the formation of the myelin sheath. This is a big one here. Um, especially with the quantity or the, or the increase in the rise of the disease multiple sclerosis. A lot of people have demyelinating autoimmune disease and, and don't even realize that copper might be playing a role in that. So again, if you have a diagnosis of MS or know somebody out there uh, who's struggling with MS, share this information about copper with them because again, the, the myelin sheath, the coating around your nerves requires copper to be able to be formed. We also know that copper plays a role in adrenaline, also sometimes referred to as a, uh, epinephrine. Or, or, um, epinephrine. They're used, they're used, those terms are used interchangeably. So adrenaline and dopamine production. Uh, so think of this as neurotransmitters, right? So dopamine is, is the neurotransmitter that helps us feel calm and relaxed. It also helps us cope with stress, whereas adrenaline is one of the primary stress hormones. So if we don't have adequate copper, we can't get the dopamine subsequently, we can't get the adrenaline, which makes us less adaptable to stress. So we can start to develop anxiety among other major symptoms of, of low levels of dopamine and adrenaline. Copper is also important for building of new blood vessels. Now, this has to do very much with collagen. Copper plays a role in the formation of collagen. Now, many of you probably take a collagen shake or use a collagen protein. And so what happens is, is when you drink those collagen shakes, what you're really after is you're after the amino acids within those shakes, right? The amino acids like proline and lysine, which is what collagen is rich in, these amino acids, they, they, once we break them down and absorb them, our body you know, reutilizes them to generate collagen. Now, collagen is, is what's called a triple helix or a tripeptide protein. It kind of looks like this, um, where you have three strands that cross over each other, and then in between the strands, you have these little linkages. These are called cross links, and these are copper dependent. So think of if you're using collagen proteins, but you're low in copper, what happens is, yes, you can still make the collagen. You can still take that collagen and make your own collagen from it. But if you're low in copper, these little cross ladders don't form. And what happens, what, why are these important? They're important for the elasticity, for the strength and the elasticity. So low copper will make your collagen basically more brittle and easier to, to break, right? So, for example, if we put this okay, into a blood vessel. This is collagen that goes into the elasticity of blood vessels, how they contract and relax, how they stretch, right? This can lead to basically, to, this is one of the connections that it actually has to blood pressure is it leads to less elasticity within the vessel itself and exerting more pressure on the wall. If this happens in the skin, so uh, away from the blood vessels, if it happens in the skin, your skin can have less resiliency, less bounce back, right? Because the collagen in the skin is very important in that regard. And many of you take skin versions of collagen in hopes, you know, to, to increase that skin elasticity, but without copper, it's not going to do you a whole lot of good. So again, back to why it's the collagen crosslinks here. Copper also plays a major role in immune system function. So one of the things copper is important for is the white blood cell production. And what we'll see oftentimes in labs is people will have low white blood cells, but specifically we'll also see low neutrophils, a special type of white blood cell. So if you've ever had a CBC, a complete blood count test done to your doctor and your white blood cell counts are always low, your neutrophil counts are low, this could very well be a copper deficiency and you would want to ask your doctor to check into that for you, making sure that this is not what's creating that. We know that copper plays a role in brain function and development. 
Remember, there are areas of your brain where dopamine is also produced. So aside from brain function and development, dopamine, there's an area of the brain called the substantia nigra. This area is where we produce most of our dopamine. And so if you've ever heard of Parkinson's, disease, which is an autoimmune disease where dopamine production is, is compromised because of an autoimmune response to this area of the brain, okay? And so a person starts to have what are called tremors or tremor disorders. Well, we know copper deficiency can also contribute to neurological problems through this dopamine. You don't have to necessarily have Parkinson's disease for the reduction in, in copper's ability to help your body produce dopamine. So very important to understand. Uh, pigmentation of the skin. There's, uh, there's a pigmentation uh, in our skin that is copper dependent. So copper, you know, without copper, you can, you can basically develop um, white discoloration of the hair. So your hair could be almost like premature gray or turn, turn light or white, but your skin could be light complected. You could be more light complected um, as a result of a copper deficiency. So that could predispose you or make you more susceptible to sun burning and things of that nature. And again, we've talked in the past in many shows about how sunshine is super important for health. So we don't want to not be able to get out in that sun because we're not producing adequate skin pigment due to a copper deficiency. And then one of the other massive or major functions of copper is that it aids in bone mineralization. So your bone is this matrix. And a lot of people, you know, will talk about calcium, right, as, as being the bone mineral mineralizer. But it's not just calcium. Magnesium is important. Zinc is important. Copper is important. Vanadium, boron. There are a lot of minerals that go into bone mineralization. Copper, again, being a very important one. And we know there are some linkages to bone loss and osteoporosis and long-standing or long-term copper deficiency. So all a lot of very important functions um, of, of what copper does for you in the body. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.